Good to have you with us today, Cosmin Poada. Come stand next to me so people will see us on Zoom. Wow, that's the first time. I... <laughs> uh, so Cosmin is a very promising young uh, streamal combinatorics person. Uh, he's here today because he works also on discrete geometry thing, but he has very interesting results in a lot of parts of streamal combinatorics. Um, so what else should we say? So this year Cosmin is in the Institute of Advanced Study, and next year is going to start his first uh, tenure track position in Emory. Uh, and today he's going to tell us about an exciting recent result about development about Erdos Sekeres problem. So uh, I can be quiet now to you. Thank you so much, Shadar. Thank you for having me. <laughs> Thank you for the very kind introduction, too kind perhaps. <laughs> um, so yeah, as, as Adam said, I'll, I'll tell you uh, a little bit about some recent joint work with Dimitri Zakharov on the, the Erdos Sekeres problem. So let me begin by maybe describing what this problem is giving some background. So uh, given two parameters, positive integers, little n and little b, one can ask the following very natural question. What is the smallest integer n that depends on these two things such that every configuration in this many points in three-dimensional space in general position no d plus one in the same hyperplane. And point in convex position. Oh. Which uh, in the plane is already approved by picture that this quantity for very small parameters. So when uh, when n equals four, that we're in the plane, this must be at least five, we can have four points that look like this. So we need at least five in order to hope to find always four points on this position. And turns out five is always enough. So uh, let me write down here. At least five, and we have at most five, um, which, which is a classical fact that can be proved by you know drawing some picture and ju judging based on a few cases. Perhaps a more, uh, more entertaining proof. So to prove that among any five points, always exists convex quadrilateral. All you have to do is remember that the complete graph on five vertices is not plane. So if you have to start with five points in the plane and you just draw the segments between every intersect somewhere internally, the like n points. The puzzle, uh, familiar to this problem, uh, tries to generalize this <laughs> to, to say anything else really about this function. Um, so for instance, uh, uh, generalize this argument in any way. Nine points. More generally, so in deep higher dimensions to find uh, d plus three points in convex position, d plus two points in convex position, which is generalizing this, and d plus three points. So I guess the puzzle extends. Uh, as of course, in d dimension. Right? In d dimension. This is for every d. To try to maybe generalize this proof uh, with, with the non-planarity of A5. It's not so easy anymore. It runs into cute, cute side questions here and there related to topological, I guess, combinatorics. Um, okay, but uh, so this is this is this is not an easy parameter to compute even for, for small uh, small integers in MD. In fact, it's not a priori clear in the small case you're seeing this for the first time. It's not a priori clear that this number should exist to begin with, namely if I give you any two numbers, little n and little d, there should be a number like this to begin with, namely that uh, always for sufficiently many points in the dimensional space, you have n points in convex position, no matter how you start with n. Uh, but this is, of course, true nonetheless. <clears throat> so this is uh, 
famously established by Edward Mustafirish in 1935. Very beautiful paper, quite important in terms for the history of uh, HTML combinatorics, because it's also Erdos's uh, first paper in combinatorics. <laughs> And in this paper, they connected this this Erdos-Tekeresh function that I uh, denoted like this after the two uh, the two authors. Uh, so they connected this function with a perhaps more familiar function, so-called Ramsey number uh, for d plus two uniform hypergraph. So it's an off diagonal Ramsey number with parameters n and d plus three, uh, which by Ramsey's theorem is known to be. Uh, a finite quantity. Uh, I won't. I won't stitch this proof. Uh, just a small comment that d plus three is the same as d plus three from here. Uh, so this 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 number exists. Uh, we know that if you start with sufficient many points, you have always n points of numbers position in B space. But okay, then the the question the question uh, uh, of how really how how many points do we actually need really uh, is still not fully unbound. For example, is this. And uh, short is really short answer is that I mean, not so good. Sorry. In the sense, uh, let's say in D equals two, um, this Ramsey number or four uniform hypergraphs um, is something like the double exponential function. Mm. And so you start with this many points, you find yeah, n points in some exposition on the plane. Uh, while on the other hand, constructions of sets without convex order, so uh, not so difficult from below to bound this function by an exponential function. So uh, you can always construct this many points in the plane with no. Uh, Convex n bound. What is really the idea? Actually, maybe here I can take advantage of this full board. So, uh, proof is very simple. Essentially, you start with this picture here. Concave quadrilateral. What do you do? Pick a generic direction that's not really related to any of the directions. And then, uh, well, you uh, double the picture in that direction. You do this correctly, and you keep doing this. You can take a new generic direction, double the picture, always much like a constant factor of two. But well, the configuration always double, and so exponential. So a bit far from this, and the uh, Erdos and Sekeres themselves in this paper where where they invite, uh, in some sense indirectly, to study hypergraph Ramsey numbers. And you can think about the motivation to so maybe understand this problem. Uh, and they have a better idea than themselves. Uh, So uh, also Ramsey theoretic, but a bit more geometry. Wait, wh why do why do root two if each time you, you, to get you double the configuration, but now the size of the largest convex subset only increases by most two. So here there was no convex mm -hmm. subset of size four initially at the beginning of that picture. Now there's no convex subset of size six. Mm -hmm. There will be no convex subset of size eight, and this thing will double. So shouldn't there not be? Oh, because two. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes. Um, I'll say a bit more about better construction in a second. So, uh, it's a really nice story. Uh, so, what's the better? Idea? Consider the following um, f of a b given two parameters a and b positive n, such that in every configuration. Points in your plane in general position. I won't write general position anymore unless I say otherwise everything is in general position. Uh, in, the past. Uh, in every configuration of that many points, there exists uh, an A cup or a B cup. What are these things? Uh, an A cup is a convex set. With a vertices that looks like this. Uh, namely, if you uh, order, I don't know, the points from left to right based on the x coordinates, you can draw these consecutive segments. 
of these segments of the supporting lines increase from left to right. A cap, the B cap, uh, the same, uh, the same thing, but that. So B points. For now, if you order them from left to right, the slopes of the consecutive segments are decreasing from left to right. So implicitly, um, okay. Implicitly, uh, these are both convex sets. So this is a special kind. Um, so here's a trivial, trivial observation with, with this definition in mind. So this function. So a cup, a cup, a points that form a convex set. But now, if you order them from left to right, so it's essentially a convex set that looks like this. Now I'm trying to describe uh, in a word what this picture looks like. So uh, it's a picture where if you order the points from left to right, remember there are no trips linear, that's general position in the plane. The slopes of these segments increase. So they go up. You draw the line passing to any points, or the picture is up. The cap is a picture uh, that looks like this. If you draw the line passing through any two points, all the pictures below. So, in particular, with n vertices, this is a five, six cap. Then uh, you find the convex angle. So, you have a trivial comparison between the two here. Uh, I think the vert deserves a better spot on the board. <clears throat> uh, that is much easier to understand this function. Um, let me write the name of it again. Turns out this function is uh, shifted by one. <clears throat> So uh, this is, of course, much closer to, to this than this function. Roughly four to the n divided by root n. Ignore constants. <laughs> Somewhat amazing uh, that we actually have an equality here. Um, mm -hmm. This is a bit more general. It goes under the name nowadays of the cap lemma. For every two parameters a and b, which this question makes sense, asking what this quantity is, uh, we can say exactly what this function is. F of a b is a binomial coefficient shifted by one. Um, so there are main nice things to say uh, about. Uh, this lemma since the beginning of it's related to our, our story. Notice that the equality itself also comes uh, together with a better construction than this doubling construction. So, uh, what does the convex set in the plane look like? Well, uh, a convex n gone. Well, it will have a bottom part that looks like this in some points above, or it will have a top part, at least half. So, in particular, this function here is also lower bounded by. Which is a central binomial coefficient, but now n is n over two. This is like two to the n divided by root n. <clears throat> um, so, uh, this, uh, in some sense, really add an idea this proof. Uh, and one of the proofs, the, the original one with resolution Sekeresh, uh, well, turns out. Uh, if you have this picture here, but the left end, left end point of the cap coincides, so this is uh, on the matter. Let's say this is a uh, a cup. And now at this end point, I start the cap. I know that the slopes here increase from left to right all the way up to here. I know that, the, but uh, what happens here? 
so treated. In this picture, notice that it drops, so we cannot continue the cup operating, so we can continue the cap. Well, this picture may not look necessarily like this. In the other case, we can continue the cup, depending on the inequality between the slopes is here. So uh, and then we're up to we get a plus one cup or a b plus one cup. B plus one cup. So uh, uh, this, with, with this in mind, it's not too difficult to uh, write down the recursive inequality for this function. So from here, not too difficult to see that you get that f of ad. Um, maybe I'll write here a minus one. A B minus one to make it prettier, okay. And we get that this function is dominated by the sum of the lower complexity functions where I just subtract one from each coordinate. And side. This uh, immediately leads to my induction, the upper bound. <clears throat> that's on the left there. and uh, uh, we have equality because we actually have equality in here back for every a and b uh, this falls with equality Up with the construction for that achieves this equality here. Um, okay, so uh, this is this is the um, the cup cap lemma. As I mentioned, uh, there there are uh, um, many nice things now that uh, that uh, that that arise. So this this one better. So as a quick recap, we have uh, these. Uh, of the exponent, so of course you can ask, you can always do better. So can one can, can do better? And this is um calculation speculation hold in the plane. Maybe this function at n minus two plus one. Uh, at the time, somewhat uh, of a brave conjecture. So this was in the original paper based on well the fact that this number is between these two and that it holds for small n, n equals four, n equals five, six. And I think they didn't check uh, anything else. Uh, but later, conveniently, they also backed it up 30 years later or so with the construction, really, of a set of uh, this many points uh, to the minus two points, with no convex n gone. But the question of kind of improving really on these estimates, uh, it's, it's, it's kind of tantalizing on its own. In the bent of this conjecture, in light of this equality, you may say, because uh, well, since this holds with the equality, it's quite curious already how to maybe prove that this other secret function is the central binomial coefficient with other one. And this actually took some time. Uh, Chang and Graham uh, first did this uh, 50 years or so after uh, the, the error secret paper. And then that kind of generated a lot of activity. Um, not long ago, uh, in 2016, managed to uh, improve dramatically uh, on on uh, on this chain of inequalities, getting an approximate version of the projection. So what what we showed was that for every um, for every n, well, this function is uh, uh, at most to the n plus some error term in the exponent, that's sublinear in n. And, uh, this was optimized. By uh, some people after. Um, Holmes and Mojarat, Park and Parvosh. The state of the art, so somewhat optimizing this argument, generalizing it, show that this error term 
uh, it's quite explicit is a constant times n to the one half function the logarithm or some constant t that's independent of n. <clears throat> um okay so um let me tell you a little bit about um this idea very uh, simple if one starts the right way with many things so um we just to use the following structure result This is a theorem uh, with the board and water. Uh, interesting for its own sake, can prove quantitatively previous results of Barani, Pap, Tolimoji, and others. This is the following. Give you a set X. Let's fix a parameter K, at least three. And then I start with a set X in, in the plane in general position, but pretty large in, in terms of K. So let's, let's say I take that x is at least to the 40 times k. Although you should not take the 40 too seriously. Now, what, what can you conclude if you have a set like this? If this would be 4 to the k, in particular for the k is bigger than some central binomial coefficient, you have um, a convex k gon. Draw. You have some convex k on that looks like this. As soon as x is at least four to the k, but x is a bit larger. So from standard arguments, it's somewhat larger set well, it doesn't just have one on this kagon, but several. And uh, now the question of okay, if you have many convex kagons, can you say something about how they cluster, how they actually look like in, in the position? Uh, in, in the plane, how are they lined up? And uh, turns out uh, you have a very very nice structure as soon as x is a bit a bit larger. So if you change the base of the exponent more dramatically, get the convex k gone such that you can draw these uh, supporting lines for the sides. Each of these triangles contains a lot of points from X. Yeah. Each triangle contains a positive fraction of X. X divided by with the four three times K points from X. Points from X. You have a ton of convex k gons. You take any point in here in this cluster, any point in this cluster, point in here, any point in here. Well, that picture is also a convex k gon if you have k triangles. Okay, so you should be doing k plus one here and k triangles. Okay, uh, so this is a really nice result. Previous results didn't have the dependence here on the fraction. So this is Barani proved some result like this, but. Uh, but uh, so much worse dependency on k, and then it's uh, improved. And uh, this is uh, really the optimal dependency up to the choice of the number 40 there. As positive fraction as a take average. Okay, so how, how uh, can one use such a thing? Uh, we have the following this many points in the plane. Well, we cannot be in points to do that. But uh, this, uh, this Kafka lemma is still very good at finding a stop or a cap of size n over 2. So you start with the set x, size 2 to the n, plus this error term in the exponent. You can find cups and caps of size n over 2 in each of these. So each of this detects uh, 2 to the n, some polynomial in n that's smaller than the linear function. You, know, you have a cup or a cap of size and so on for each of them. So what the whole? Perhaps one can combine cups and caps of size n over two together to get the set of convex set of size n. That's a very simple argument. So either you find two consecutive points, uh, two, two, two looking at each other like this, this is where x 
So this like that. So either you're lucky and you find two two cups or cups that look at each other like this, and some consecutive pair, or these cups cats are shy. Don't look, they don't look at each other, they look at the floor. <clears throat> but then you can also combine these guys together on different uh, different sections, not necessarily consecutive in fact, not consecutive at all. Mm -hmm. This idea in mind will take one page. Um, okay, so this is the story in the plane. Um, We now switch to higher dimensions. Not on the board. Oh, not on the board anymore. We have some upper bound by some Ramsey number. So uh, this is this of the uh, Ramsey number and uniformity d plus two, something like this. I won't even bother to write down uh, an upper bound for uh, the best known upper bound for this. It becomes worse and worse with the dimension because the dimension dictates the uniformity of this hypergraph and Ramsey numbers for uh, hypergraphs become larger and larger with the increased uniformity. So this, this, this function is known to be upper bound by a tower type, tower of exponentials of length, something like linear and D. So very bad bound. Um, uh, okay, so what's next? Uh, cup cap. Uh, lemma. Like that. There's the cup cap lemma argument. Maybe one can try to generalize. Uh, it's a bit better than this in the plane. It turns out that it doesn't really generalize in any clear. Uh, uh, try to maybe use a high uniformity version. Um, there's a lot of nice, nice words that I cannot write uh, 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 with the time constraint, but any nice result like uh, Elias and Matusse. Uh, in fact, Guy, Guy Moshkovit and Shapira, uh, some nice, some nice generalizations of Kapka, Fox, Fox, Soup, and Sudako, various generalizations that um, lead to progress on. Uh, other kind of Erdos-Dekerish functions, but but not this one. Um, okay, so this 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 approach uh, this this have immediate benefits, but there is a still lining. So what next? It's not the end of the story. There's a very simple projection argument that really defies the high uniformity of the problem. So turns out if you regard e, the dimension, it's really decreasing. Whatever bound you have for the planar function, it's actually applied for the d-dimensional function. The proof is uh, instant, so uh, take some generic plane, project, find the convex point there, and then look at the pre-images. Okay, I won't draw too many. <clears throat> the pre-images form a convex set. <clears throat> this applies, of course, for any choice of dimensions. So there's a very natural question that comes up uh, like this argument. So could this bound become worse and worse with the dimension? This, this is uh, kind of the wrong, the, the, diff, uh, the, other, the other way. Uh, could maybe uh, this d-dimensional function be much smaller than the planar one? Could the f of d again be much smaller? <clears throat> then yes, two right? Okay, so uh, what's the answer? It's really not clear at, at first. Uh, at first glance, and maybe second and third glances, so possible answers, conjectures. I'll start with the most, I think, the bravest one. Uh, maybe the answer is just no. Uh, and um, one cannot really improve on this 
chain of inequalities that's come from the projection argument. Perhaps, you know, there's some weird higher convex geometry phenomenon going on, and you really need uh, this many points uh, in space also. It's true. Uh, and I have to say that for, for a really long time, this was really the, the best known bond for the d dimensional function. Or some local optimization where you can gain additive factors over this if you project more carefully from a point of the this chain of inequalities, it's a close part. Uh, but in other words, it's not really clear what happens if the set of points in space is really clustered around the two planes. <clears throat> okay. Uh, what else could the answer be? <laughs> it's not, not no. So yes, but maybe not. Uh, in other words, maybe it's still exponential. Yeah. Expansions. A, B is of the form 2 to the 2 n over D. Well, some error term maybe here. When D equals 2, you get what's known in the plane. And this is an exponent here that kind of generalizes uh, that, that result. Um, they uh, have an even more precise conjecture. So uh, along the lines of the erdos sekeresh conjecture in the plane, they suggested that maybe based on again uh, phenomena for small n in terms of d, an identity holds. Uh, suppose that maybe this identity holds for all n and b whenever it makes sense. The d-dimensional function is equal with n, so the function n minus d, or four times uh, the function of n minus d minus a three. If I remember correctly, so hopefully an identity that generalizes the two to the n minus two plus one conjecture when d equals two. Plus again. So where do for a good chunk of n plus around the uh, linear function and d. So for all n at most like three d or something like this, three d over two, I forget. Uh, this holds with equality. Uh, uh, what about lower bound? So you showed that SN has and has to be lower bound on. Yeah. I'll mention something right now. So this is the, the third uh, option. Um, so perhaps I need a smaller, but uh, much smaller, in fact, uh, sub exponential. So perhaps. Mm -hmm. And, and uh, one can pre conjecture uh, of, uh, of Fourier, that's the best known lower bound construction of the chief. So, uh, yeah, this is uh, upper bounded by well, equal by uh, with two to the, the constant that depends on the dimension times n to the power one over d minus one. This is based on the best. Construction due to Caroli and Walter, um, which is a construction of this many points in space with no endpoints in convex position. <clears throat> um, so not really clear. Uh, unfortunate choice of a board for this statement. <clears throat> but, um, I mean, these three different possible answers. We don't know what to believe in for, for the longest time. We kind of move from one to another uh, while working on the project with uh, Dimitri here. We can use our gears to find the slides again. We can do it. Um, the closest to reality, this function is uh, indeed sub exponential in n, and in fact, in three dimensions already sub exponential in n. So, to find n points in convex position in 3D space, uh, you don't only need sub exponential in many points, <clears throat> so much more than you need in the plane to ensure that you find n points in this chain of inequalities. So uh, this one's still plausible. And maybe a word of short answer is that don't really, we, we don't really know uh, 
while this is the best mode of construction, it could easily be not the right thing. So in some sense, option that I started with, so could be that in space is not the right construction either. However, is the best one. Uh, but uh, I think uh, the question uh, that's very natural is uh, perhaps more natural than trying to throw this in the short construction. Is there some absolute constant t greater than zero such that those major depend on the dimension? This function is upper bounded by uh, two to the constant times. So, is there some actual power saving in this, uh, this exponent here? Uh, our little O term, which we actually mentioned, function that kind of looks like this, is n divided by uh, an iterated log five times. So, it's not, not of this shape. <clears throat> So something that is sublinear, nobody has seen it being sublinear. It's a, a very slow growing function, but uh, an effective little over nonetheless can be optimized with different ideas. Uh, now I think we can do different things. Okay, so let me mention uh, about the proof, but let me at least give you some uh, some of the ideas. <clears throat> Fifteen ideas. I don't think I'll have time to. <coughs> Get to all of them, but I'll see some words. So the first one is an appropriate generalization, and it works for our purpose. In some sense, not a fully satisfying generalization, uh, but it, it works nonetheless. So, uh, capital M I not big. So, let's say some definition for it. Um, the convex set. And uh, so convex set here doesn't need to so this this uh, result here can think uh, of all of those. It doesn't even have to be bounded. So it's an intersection of uh, some number of cut spaces it doesn't have to be bounded. Uh, we say that a set of points in our dream general position is T3. If for every two points in X, the line through them does not intersect P, and uh, say this is a P cap. If for every point in X, X is not in the convex hall of uh, X union P minus X. So what does this uh, look like if this is P? <clears throat> I said X is called a P cap. It essentially looks like this. Namely, if you think the, if it fails to become X, it doesn't fail because of X. So each point in here is separated from the rest. <clears throat> P3, I think you don't need, need to draw to imagine. It really means that any, any line Passing to the point statement, uh, very large two to the number of uh, of this polytope one dimensional bases. Then X contains uh, either a P cap of size A. Or some other kind of convex set that might not be a cap, some convex set of size B. Don't say anything about the proof. Uh, just mentioned many points. <clears throat> Argument on uses some. Dilworth's theorem and posit structure. I essentially define a posit for each edge of P. Do some projection along that edge. So these are some buzzwords that go in. Uh, how do you use it? So what's the end game? The end game is kind of, uh, very simple. You want the following. So uh, uh, 
um, you want that uh, for two things. Okay. One subset Z1, Z2, Zp, subset of X. You want polytopes. P1 PP that don't have too many edges with a constant number of edges. Okay. Such that three things happen. Property number one ZI is PI free. So this is like a condition about the diagonal. Take each step in here, it's PI free with respect to it gets its own polytop with respect to which is PI free. There's an off diagonal condition, each step here, um, normally large in X. Um, X, size of X is some constant. <clears throat> How is this useful? Have a set X and R3 with no convex subsets of size N. And you want to prove that X is sub exponential in F. And this side of X. And somehow you have these uh, really nice subsets D1, ZP, and X, or large, and these good polytopes satisfying these conditions. Well, if X is large, in particular, if it's bounded by the following binomial coefficient from below, the raise to a constant seems large enough. If this is true, then the ZIs are large. If this is constant multiplied be more than the number of edges in each of these polytopes, I can apply the cap cap lemma to each of these. This is for appropriate. Right? Have the ZI satisfy this. So by cap cap lemma, for these choices of parameters A and B, you either have a, a, a cap, PI cap of size and over D, and PI cap is the same. Or you have a convex set of size n, but with possibility not large, larger than this, then all of these uh, are uh, pi caps in one of each of these sets. So the main observation is that uh, these are doable together. If you take d1 prime, d2 prime, and you merge, this is a convex set. Uh, <clears throat> clusters okay so uh i would say maybe so okay, these are finite sets of points in there you have in gi prime one prime i prime okay and remember that these uh these particles are have very few edges so PI will look like this. It's some polytope that contains all the other sets. Union of this will be convex for every index. It must be convex. None will be at fault. The whole thing must be convex. Each has size n over t, so you get n. Um, some constant. And now, if you have this setup with t growing with n, it's very important. This number is sub exponential.
So uh, yeah, I won't really have much time to, to tell you uh, what are the other ideas. Essentially, of course, the question is how, how can you possibly get some structure like this? So maybe just I'll write a statement. <clears throat> Uh, of course, very much in the spirit of the structure theorem that uh, took use, but uh, with some heavy separation conditions. So, uh, here are number two uh, structure we want. Um, what is it? So, I give you some parameter, okay, like before, and now I Start with the cut x in R3, that's large in terms of k. I want to bother to write some, some function like I did before, like this would be a 40 k, so that's more complicated, but let me just say like this. So grow several exponentials in k. Now, uh, what's the claim? I claim there are some subsets of one with k, subsets of x, all large, so there are these clusters. That contain the positive proportion of the points in X. They satisfy two important properties. The first one, perhaps not so impressive, they achieve this if you just plug in here to the 40k, you know, by a cold volume result. That's how you should really think of it. There's a second condition. Quite strong that will ask for these clusters to obey. There's a very nice separation property for every partition of these sets into four intervals and into four groups. So maybe let me say in terms of intervals for every part of the interval of indices in the four. We have something. Hmm. Okay, you can try to draw some something like this here. Uh, I have this interval, it's from one up to k. I split it into four intervals. Let's do here i1, i i4. No condition on these intervals, they can be closed. No matter how you split one up to k like this, I have this property that if you take the convex hull of the sets, the union of the sets corresponding to these indices, all the indices in i1, i3. This is separated, this joint from the convex hall of the indices coming from the other two indices. So, uh, this is the convex geometry, the Halley theorem or Halley type theorems. Essentially, you, it's not too difficult with ham samples. It says in this list, that's not really enough. To ensure this this wall separation for every partition, but if this kind of partition fails for because of a small number of sets in the list, not four but five, so because we're in three, so uh, it's kind of close. And then you need Ramsey type argument to maybe push push the two uh, the two sides to meet in the middle. Uh, so one one has to use a structure here. Like this. this is kind of the, the proof. So it's not too difficult to to uh, uh, to finish. Although uh, this is a somewhat delicate argument using both sets, Kopf and Dilworth and Ramsey for the Ramsey application. Essentially, the polytopes here. Uh, so what 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 are going to be these sets? So they will be generated by a bunch of separating planes going on for every 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 party. Uh, those separating planes. And one can ensure those properties using some application of gravity. Yeah. So this is very vague, but uh, most of time, so I can't really uh, torture you with more details. Uh, well, in here. <clears throat> uh, uh, okay. But I'm happy to, to go into more if you're curious. <clears throat> Thank you. Um, so I guess we can stop the recording and questions. <clears throat>